With me is uh, the chief of USIBC, Ambassador Atul Kasha, but someone who has been in the US government and uh, was the top uh, US uh, uh, diplomat here in Delhi as well in his previous tenure. So welcome to Vion and it's good to see you here in Delhi. Welcome to Vion. And my first question to you is, what brings you here to Delhi? How has been engagement here in Delhi? You have met the Indian External Affairs Minister, the Foreign Secretary, and other ministers as well. Thanks, Sadat. It's great to see you, and thanks for your time with the interview. This is my first visit to Delhi as the President of the United States India Business Council. I've had fantastic meetings. I met with uh, Minister Jai Shankar, uh, Minister Piyush Goyal, uh, Minister uh, Nitin Gadkari, and also Minister Rajiv Chandra Shekharan on my first day. And then I met several secretaries of the government of India on my second day. And then I have further meetings with ministers and with secretaries of the government over the next two days, and then I leave. So uh, this is just the first of what I hope is many visits to India over the years to come. And I've been very pleased with how constructive and positive uh, the discussions have been. I was in New York right before this, and when I talked to the big banks and to the big private equity funds, uh, they recognize the macroeconomic stability of India, the 9% growth, the very stable sort of budgetary projections, uh, the, the demographics, the rule of law. And so I think there was a lot of optimism in New York, uh, and I heard that optimism as well in meetings with the government of India. Uh, they, I think, have a very positive view of the trajectory of U.S.-India relations. And certainly there was a quad leaders meeting, uh, I think, on the, when I was on my way over here. So the logic of U.S.-India is very strong uh, in terms of our business convergence, our technological convergence, people to people. So I felt very good about the meetings, and I go back very optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see the business engagement between India and U.S.? It has been, of course, something that has been a stuff of legend now in terms of the increased engagement. But how do you foresee it going at a time when we have seen the world having the impact of the pandemic and now, of course, the war as well? Right. So this reinforces the logic. Uh, our relations have grown, trade and commercial relations have grown to about 120 to $140 billion. There's $100 billion in trade in goods and services in the digital economy alone between the US and India. So this trade is the goose that's laying the golden eggs. And what we need to do, government to government, uh, and a trade association to trade associations, and people to people, and business to business, is expand that. Um, I've espoused a very positive vision of $500 billion in trade between the United States and India. I want to achieve that goal. I've talked to, with Minister Piyush Goyal about the need for some sort of trade framework where we can really enhance the confidence of our companies and our investors to work in each other's co uh, countries. I would say that, uh, in fact, trade and commercial ties are booming, but there is always room for improvement. If governments can ease the way of doing business, if they can ensure a level playing field, if they can ensure smooth and, tr and, and transparent and stable regulations and policies, then I think business will pour in because the U.S. and India are the two great relatively stable democratic polities. And at a moment of, as you said, just after the pandemic and with this war that has been thrust upon the entire world, you know, commodity prices are going to go up. Uh, inflation is a big issue for all of us. So our companies can work together to address that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you talked about how the relationship can go forward, uh, but uh, there was a talk of a mini trade deal. What's your view about having this kind of trade deal at a time when India is engaged with many countries for FTAs? And also there are, of course, irritants talked about by Washington publicly. What do you see about that? Do you see a resolution on that front as well? How are you engaging with the Indian side? Siddhant, I've put 20 years of my professional career as a diplomat into this relationship. Now I'm a retired uh, U.S. government official, so I uh, do not work for the U.S. government, nor do I speak for it. But what I'll say is there has always been ambition in the U.S.-India relationship from both sides, and there is still work to be done. So from the perspective of our members and from the perspective of the United States Chamber of Commerce, which represents the power of free enterprise in America, there is absolutely a desire for a, um, a framework, a set of rules, a set of procedures that can enhance 
trust and confidence in both directions, build investment, uh, build job creation, uh, take care of prices and reduce inflation through greater choice. And so from the perspective of our members, we would love to see increased progress. And I think my meetings were very encouraging uh, in Delhi. And I think there's also been some very good signaling from the, from the US administration. So from the sidelines, we are cheering and we're saying, please go ahead. Uh, it can lead to even greater prosperity for both of our people. It's not a, a win-lose proposition, it's a win-win proposition. Mm. A win-win proposition and uh, this is coming at a time uh, when we know that the war, as you talked about, has been thrusted on the world. Uh, India has close relationship with both Washington and Moscow. Uh, Moscow is trying to increase engagement in terms of Indian businesses to come there. Uh, America has put sanctions. How do you see India's position? What would you expect from India at this time? Because uh, it's highly unlikely that India is going to uh, lower down its engagement with uh, Russia in terms of businesses and defense uh, procurement, but also continue with Washington. Look, I've already talked about the compulsions that impact various countries. Uh, I don't need to revisit that. What I will say is, let me tell a story. Uh, I was on the flight from Chicago the other day, uh, 15 and a half hours nonstop, absolutely full, every seat, with Indian Americans going home, Indians going home. That people-to-people -people relationship between the United States and India is unbeatable. It is the genius and the energy and the drive of our two relations. The business-to-business -business relationship is amazing. The things that your companies are doing in the United States, the things our companies are doing in India, we are building the future of the planet in terms of healthcare, in terms of te technology and the digital economy, in terms of the day-to-day -day lives of our people. This kind of collaboration and integration between our two economic ecosystems mm -hmm. is going to drive the happiness of the planet for the entire century to come. So you look at all the emerging technologies, US and India are talking about how to work together on those. Um, you talk about the business ties and the financial flows. I was very encouraged by how the New York financial firms that control trillions of dollars of, of assets are looking at India. When I talk to Indian businesses, I hear optimism about the United States as a stable country, a democratic country with rule of law, ease of doing business. So look, these are tough geopolitical times, uh, and we didn't choose them, but they are upon us. And this is where democracies have to stick together. Mm -hmm. We believe in the politics of abundance. We believe in the politics of prosperity. We believe in working together as friends. When we needed help during the pandemic, India came to our aid. And when India needed help, we came to India's aid. Hundreds of millions of dollars of aid in both directions because we have faith in each other. We trust each other. And that airplane full of people, that's the glue that connects our countries. It's a genius that we have between us that we need to sustain and grow. Mm. Sustain and grow. So essentially you are pointing to the people-to-people -people relationship which India and US has that is the future rather than perhaps an engagement only on defense in terms of countries like Russia, India has. Look, ours is a $22 trillion economy and India has aspirations to become a five and ten and even more trillion dollar economy. I want democracies to work together. I think it's good for freedom-loving people. We should have free world supply chains. We should have trust and confidence in each other. And I think there is an enormous amount of trust and confidence between the American people and the Indian people. That's the future. Mm -hmm. Free people working together for the betterment of the entire world. Just take the example of vaccines during the pandemic. Which were the two countries that gave away more doses than any other? United States and India. That's the future. That's the paradigm for humanity. Mm -hmm. So my last question to you is you epitomize the relationship in terms of your Indian origin, you are an American, you have played an important role in the US government. Uh, if you can tell to our viewers about your story, about uh, you being connected to both India and United States. Siddhant, that's very kind of you. I've been very lucky in this life. My father was Indian, my mother American, but my mother's grandfather was born in India. His, my great grandfather was helping build a hydroelectric dam here. Uh, at the turn of the century, 1907, 1903. So I've had India and the, and the United States in my blood from the beginning, and I've been exposed to so much through my government career, through my uh, personal life as a child coming to India from Africa, going to America from Africa. 
it has created a, a set of tools and awarenesses and understandings that I have tried to use in a way that is respectful of the desire of our two countries to get closer together. My view in life is, and it's a philosophy given from my parents, put in full effort. If God has given you blessings in life of ability to speak and talk and work and think, you must pay that back to society for the well-being of everybody. You cannot only think of yourself. So uh, it was logical for me to join the diplomatic service and serve my country. But one great thing about being an American diplomat is that we always look to the well-being not only of ourselves, but of other countries. We always want better things for each other. And uh, one of the happiest moments of my life was being posted to India. Uh, coming here in 2005, uh, during the last years of my father's life, uh, coinc was coincidental with the nuclear deal. And I put an enormous amount of effort into that along with thousands of other people. And I'm really, really happy to see how much our relations have come closer together since the nuclear deal. Mm -hmm. There has been enormous dividend from that in terms of warmth and friendship, strategic commonality of views. And I want to keep building that, okay? Mm -hmm. Not for myself, but for the well-being of, of our countries. So it, it is very profoundly meaningful for me to be able to work on the U.S.-India relationship. I've had an enormous uh, run of luck in this regard. I think God has greatly blessed me in what uh, he has given me or she has given me, mm -hmm. and now I have to repay it. Mm -hmm. This organization, the United States-India Business Council, is composed of companies uh, that believe in the greater happiness of, of humanity. They believe in peace, prosperity, security, democracy, health, well-being. The U.S.-India Business Council is part of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which believes in the power of free enterprise for the happiness of people, not just in America, but all around the world. The pursuit of happiness is enshrined in our Constitution. Your Constitution took a lot of cues from the American Constitution. So this project of convergence is really critically important. I believe firmly that U.S. and India need to grow to become the single most geostrategically relevant and consequential relationship of any two countries on Earth. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting there, and we have more work to do. And so for the remainder of my life, with all of these gifts that God has given, I want to put my effort into that. And if that means the happiness of our countries, the prosperity of our people, and the strength of democracy, mm -hmm. then I feel like I've done my dharma. Mm -hmm. Dan, your dharma. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion uh, on an extensive range of issues. And perhaps we'll meet you soon um, in your future visits to India, which is your uh, second home. So there you have it, the word from the chief of the US IBC and uh, one of the top diplomats here, American diplomats uh, here in his uh, previous tenure on several issues, uh, whether it's trade or whether it is the relationship, how the relationship can be taken forward with video journalist Neeraj Patel, Siddhan Sibbal for Vion in New Delhi.